Hey there, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Switch Group project and I'm going to show you its properties, how to configure it, and also how to make use of it. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without further delay, let's get started. Alright, to get started, I am going to bring in a Switch Group widget into the canvas and right here we have a Switch Group widget showing up. The first property we have to configure here is the options array and as you can see this is an array of options which consists of objects that have a label and value field so it means in order to add new options to the switch group project all you need to do is supply a new list of options to the array right here so for example i can add brown for instance and give this a value of brown and there we have brown showing up in the options array and it's also possible for you to write javascript in the options field in order to pull in the options from a javascript file from a db query on an api call it's possible for you to write javascript here as you can see so you can go into write some javascript and do all of those operations if it's required in your use case so let's put that back Moving on, we have the default selected values. And these are the values that are selected by default whenever the switch group is rendered. So for example, you can go add in a new option. So we can say red, for example, and you can see that we have red selected. You can also delete all of this and you see that we do not have any value selected by default. So that's the default selected values. For other values or other properties of the switch group widget, you also have the inline property and this controls the alignment of the switch group widget. So you can see all of this is vertical. When this is turned off and turning this back on, you have a grid alignment within the switch group widget. The next property we have right here is the required property and this is designed to be used with the form widget. We have the form widget right here. We have the form widget right here. And when this is used in the form widget, it is going to disable form submission until the user goes in to select something from the switch group widget. So that's the required property. We have the visible property. This controls the visibility of the widget whenever the app is deployed. And similarly, we have the disabled property. This controls the disabled state of the switch group widget. So it means that the widget will be visible, but would not be interactable by the user that's for the disabled property and you have the property for animating the loading state of the widget so this is specifically designed to be used when you have the options being pulled from an api call or a db query during the load time you can choose to show the loading animation or you can choose to turn this off whatever you fancy you have the ability to do that and for all of these properties you can go in to write some javascript to return either true or false to turn these properties on or off so you have the ability to do that and for styling you can go to change the alignment of the switch group widget so you can make this right aligned or you can go to make this left aligned and that is going to be left aligned for actions you can go to run an action whenever an option is selected from the switch group widget and for the actions you have all of these actions from the predefined list or you can go in to write some custom JavaScript to run whatever action you have specified. So that's going to run an action whenever an option from the switch group widget changes. All right, to show you how to read properties from the switch group widget, I am just going to bring in a new text widget right here. So we have a text widget and let's expand this. All right, and for the text property, I am going to display uh, the option selected from the switch group widget. So this is going to be switch group one dot selected values. And you can see right now we have blue and red selected. And we can go select something like brown and you can see that brown is showing up on the list. So this is how you can read values selected from the switch group widget using the dot selected value key. And you can also go into access other properties from the switch group widget by taking a look at the evaluated value pane and reading whatever property you require for your application. All right, so this has been how to use the switch group widget. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.